Welcome to the SSA training video series. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to add a client to SSA. Okay, guys, so you've gone out, you've done the work, we've found a client or a lead has called you and you need to put it in SSA so you can start nurturing that customer and start on the next step of getting to work with that customer. So what do you do? Okay, so right when you log into SSA, you're going to have your taskbar and that's going to be over on the left hand side. We've got dashboard, accounting, clients, reports, settings, support and tools. We're going to be navigating ourselves towards the client bar. So we're going to click that tab and we're going to click add client. OK, so then basically we're just going to be filling in the boxes. OK, so not a oops, hope if I spelled things correctly. Um, not very difficult to do so, but make sure that you guys are spelling things correctly and putting accurate information in here because everything in SSA is going to be searchable, whether it's the name, address, city, state, phone number or even email. So make sure you guys are putting in accurate information when entering in a client. All right, so we have three fields for phone numbers, phone, alternate phone, and cell. Now, some of your customers are gonna have a landline, they're gonna have a cell phone, they may have two cell phones. Uh, very rarely are they gonna have two landlines, but it's very common that your customer may have a couple different numbers. You may have the husband and wife or something like that. So with SSA, and we'll talk about this functionality later, but we're able to communicate with our customers through SSA. So we're, we are, we're able to do that through their phone, and but also through their email. So all three of these fields are important to make sure that you have correct information, but the cell field will enable you to talk to your customer uh, through text message. So this is a very important field to have. And then of course your email. Now we'll, again, we'll talk about this functionality later, but the email field is important as well because that enables us to send bids to that customer's email to communicate, talk about start dates, send them uh, email drip campaigns and things of that nature. So email is very important to have in the system as well. Now, what SSA is going to do is it's going to auto generate your customer's password. You can either leave that the way it is or, you know, we've had some people in SSA that will actually change the password to say one, two, three, four, five. And that way, all of their guys, you know, when they have a customer call and say that they're having trouble logging into their client portal, that they can say, OK, well, your password's one, two, three, four, five. It's just a way for the guys to remember it without having to log in while they're on the go. How you choose to do that is completely up to you. SSA is going to auto generate that for you. OK, so we want to add the client. Now that we've added a client, we've put a client in the system. But what we haven't done is we haven't added a job. Now, nothing happens in SSA unless there's a job added. And when I'm, I mean nothing, I mean payments, jobs, trades, notes, communications. All those things need to happen inside of the job. And you can have one customer with 100 jobs. So it's important that we get the client in there, but it's really important that we get the job in there as well, because we want to be able to add files to that customer pictures, notes. We want to work that job from lead on through completion uh, to get payment. So we need to do that in the job. OK, so SSA, everything in SSA is status driven. So your statuses may differ from the statuses that you're going to see on this screen. You may have your own set of statuses that you want to set. Uh, in SSA that match your organization's structure. So this is just a training video kind of showing you how to use the functionality of adding a job. So in this particular case, we've already set an appointment with this customer. We're going to go out there, say, uh, next Tuesday at 9 a.m. So my status would be appointment set. OK, so you have a job number, job total. Now, we haven't sold this job yet, so I don't want to put a job total onto it because I'm not there yet. But I do want to name it. Um, one of the one of the companies we work with keeps it very simple. They either put roof or repair. It's up to you guys how you want to name your jobs. Again, this is going to go by your organization's structure. So however you choose to do that is going to be your choice. Now, a lot of this is going to be autofill. It's going to have the name uh, or the address, city, state, zip, phone number is going to be in there. Now we need to assign a salesperson. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and assign that salesperson. An inquiry date. So guys, the inquiry contract and close date. SSA is, is an amazing tool. It's only as good as the information that you're putting into it. So you guys need to be getting with your organization to make sure that they know what important information is needed when they're adding a customer or adding a job. 
Putting an inquiry date in this field as you're adding the job allows you to run accurate reports of how many leads you're getting per week, per month, or per year. That's important because you want to you want to go backwards and track your closing percentage to figure out how many leads you ran and how many leads you closed. But you can't do that if you're not putting accurate information into the system. So that's where these fields come into play. So right now, all we have is an inquiry date. We're going to put it as today. But when your guy comes in and closes it, you want to put a contract date. When you close it, you want to put the close date. And that's all part of working these jobs down to completion is having this accurate information in there. OK, so we're going to skip down a little bit. Um, we're going to skip over forms completed, material on location, permit needed. You may be in an area where permits are needed. Um, so, you know, you can use this as you need to material on location. You can come in here and, and mark it yes or no. So at, how you order material is going to change. You know, you may have some, we have some companies that choose to drop material the morning of that they're working on it and it gets dropped around eight or nine o'clock in the morning. We have some companies that want to drop it a day or two ahead of time. So this may be useful for you. It might not. Okay. Um, supplements. So if you're a company that does insurance restoration, you may be doing supplements. You may be uh, contacting the insurance company, adding things like extra layers of felt or dump fees, or maybe they miss some things. Um, so these supplements uh, are going to be done in the system. Again, we need to be able to track that. You need to be able to know how much money in supplements you're actually generating. So you put that information into the system. Okay. How the lead was generated. Again, going back to reporting real quick. When you're running reports, when you're adding these clients in and you want to go back and see what was your most valuable lead source, you need to be able to see that. So if you guys aren't putting how the lead was generated when you're putting in the job, there's no way for you to go back and track and see how uh, what your number one lead source was or what your top three lead sources are. So whether you're admin or customer service or a salesperson, this field is extremely important to give you guys accurate information of what you're doing right and what your number one lead source is going to be. So for the purposes of this, um, this video, I'm just going to set it as GMB. Again, these lead sources can be configured. So if you guys want to change these lead sources, y'all have different lead sources, y'all want to change these or simplify them, you can absolutely do so. Okay. And then the last, one of the last things you want to do is add a task or add a note. I want to add a task because I already have this appointment set and it's going to be next Tuesday at 9 a.m. So I'm going to go ahead and put this task on there and how you name it is up to you. I think putting the customer name on the task calendar and the city um, that they're going to be running it in is, is very helpful because it gives you that information on the calendar. But however you choose to organize that is completely up to you. So again, I'm going to choose date and time. And I'm going to do the end date as the same day. And depending on how long you run that appointment, it may take you an hour to run an appointment. It may take you a couple hours. However you do that is up to you. I'm going to set my notification for 60 minutes and I'm going to put a little task description. I'm going to click email this to the salesman. So as soon as I click add new job, this salesperson is going to get an, uh, an email that they have a new task assigned for next Tuesday at 9 a.m. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Click add a new job. So I've done a couple things with adding a client. I've, I've added the client in, I've put their information in, I've also added a job, I've set the status, and I've set an appointment for this salesperson all within about eh, seven to 10 minutes. And really this is going a little bit slower than usual because I wanna take my time so you guys can see exactly how it is that you need to be putting these leads in here. But this takes five to 10 minutes or so. So not a whole lot of time, and you can do this from anywhere. So guys, remember SSA, you can access this from web. You can do it on your phone, you can do it on a tablet. So this is something you can do anywhere at any time, okay? So just scrolling through the job really quick, and we'll, we'll do a video on how to navigate the jobs page, but here is your job. So your job is in here. This allows you to work through this customer, and then of course you have your client. So we've already added the client. There's my client up here. So here's your folder with the client. And then here's the job. So if you have a customer with multiple jobs, all the jobs are going to pile up underneath in the jobs tab. So if you have a customer, maybe you have a maintenance agreement with, you're going to have all those jobs there and you can navigate through that. So guys, I hope this video was informative. I hope it helps you. Uh, just a recap. We went through how to add a client and then adding a job directly from the dashboard using your tabs, go into client and add a client.